Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, when in doubt, zoom out. And I can tell right now there's a lot of people out there who are a little bit worried about the crypto market and especially what is going on uh, as it pertains to what's going on in the rest of the market. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is a little piece here by Squawk Box. We're gonna talk about stagflation and what that means and what is happening in the traditional market. As we see, everything is down, S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and Bitcoin and just how low it could potentially go. But we're gonna take a quick recap and just talk about how when in doubt, zoom out and where that all leads us to right around now. Also, we're gonna take a look at some Amazon lessons, uh, things from the past, as far as uh, how much Amazon lost and how they actually uh, recouped. And finally, we're gonna take a look at a little bit of wisdom from uh, the gentleman who called Bitcoin rat poison squared, <laughs> Warren Buffett, and this does actually pertain to the crypto market. So first, let's take a look at what is going on essentially with the market, and we're down again. And uh, we're at $1.25 trillion market cap. So two and three quarters, about two point, almost 3% down in about 24 hours. So uh, yeah, a little bit uh, down, but uh, that is to be expected. Again, July, not a great month. August, probably a little bit of a, hopefully a little bit of a, of, of a recoup, but we will see. So now we'll take a look at what specifically uh, these coins are and how much they have lost uh, over a little bit of time. So Bitcoin is at uh, 30,000. Uh, Ethereum continues to take a big slide uh, to 1822, which is kind of odd uh, specifically because EIP 1559 is right on the corner, which I think is big news. You uh, Tether, nobody cares. Binance coin is down 7%, Cardano down 5%, still holding pretty strong, $1. thirteen, pretty good. USDC, another stable coin, XRP, watch out, only 4%. Uh, Dogecoin, 5 8% for Polkadot, very odd. There was some news about uh, Polkadot and Facebook coming out, so sure. 3%, 4%, Solana down almost 10%. Wow, it's a bargain. 6% ICP, and just down the down the road, 9% for Theta. Whew, wow. So, I mean, that is it is what it is. So, I know people are very worried, and uh, just like we talked about, I, July is a bad month, and uh, here we are, and it's not disappointed, like I've said before. So, what do we need to look at? Well, First thing we need to take a look at is this little clip, which talks about stagflation and what's going on. So this is about a minute and a half or so. Just take a listen. Uh, this is from Squawk Box about what's going on. And you can tell uh, even the traditional guys are pretty darn worried. So take a listen. It's big pre-market sell-off uh, is Mohammed Alarian, Allianz and Gramercy advisor. He's also the president of Queens College, Cambridge. Jim thinks three to 5% what, uh, in terms of a pullback perhaps from a recent levels, Mohammed, does that sound reasonable to you? So I always respect Jim and, and what Jim has pointed to are concerns about the market technicals. He spoke about SPACs, he spoke about retail investors maybe being shaken out. So you have two concerns coming together this morning, concerns about market technicals and concerns about growth. And that's what all, all the asset classes are telling you this morning. So, so basically what he's getting to is he's going to talk about stagflation. I'm not going to play it because I can just uh, sum it up in, in a couple of, in, in a picture actually. But I want you to notice this, S&P 500, Dow Jones, and NASDAQ. So real quick, stagflation, what is it? It's when inflation keeps going up. Uh, the GDP starts to uh, decline or is in the decline. And there's still a high rate of unemployment or unemployment they expect to actually go up. And that's pretty much what we have right here. And of course, the Fed will sit back and go, you know what? No big deal about inflation. Not a big deal. We expect it. But uh, no big, we're just going to keep printing money. And that's and they're going to keep bailing things out. So uh, we'll see if that uh, policy works for them. Who knows? But I want you to notice this, which is the S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. It's all down. It's all down. So if we take a look at it real quick, wow, look at that. You've got uh, 2% in a day. What? And that's uh, that's for the S&P 500. Dow Jones, uh, two and a half percent in a 24-hour time frame. Watch out! And then of course, 1.48 percent for the Nasdaq Composite. And uh, wow, one and a half percent. And uh, of course, if we take a look at Bitcoin uh, again. Uh, we're down uh, what three percent, four percent. Ethereum is down four and a half percent, almost five percent. Ouchie! Pretty bad, right? Pretty bad. And that's just awful. But what I want you to remember is this thing I've been talking about a long time. The thing that Diddy told me over at the Bitcoin family. When in doubt, zoom out. So let's take a look at this. What is going on for the last five days for S&P 500? All right, so a little bit down. How about the month? Okay, about the same. It went up, went down. 
How about six months? Still pretty good. How about year to date? Pretty darn good. How about for the year? Excellent. How about five years? How about the max? So that's just the S&P 500. And yes, I understand that we're going to still see some more pullbacks. Um, gentleman on the uh, El Arian just said that uh, between three and five percent, and we've only gone down two and a half percent. So maybe it could it could double to five percent. Wow, watch out! But still, when in doubt, zoom out. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Here's twenty. Here's twenty four hours. Here's in five days. All eh, right, you got me on that one. A month, about the same. Six months, looking pretty good. Year to date, one year, five years. Fantastic. Man, look at that huge drop. And then, of course, if you take a look at the max, which is like uh, over forever, 1982. I mean, that's uh, pretty darn good. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Let's just go to a month. About the same. How about six months? Looking pretty good. How about year to date? How about one year? How about five years? Still looking fantastic. So again, when people are just flipping out, like, I can't believe three to 5%. Well, how much are you up? How much are you up? Now, the big question is, when did you start to invest? And we're going to get to those types of things uh, and uh, just things that we're going to talk about as far as what Warren Buffett says about those. So let's take a look at Bitcoin real quick. And uh, this should be as a surprise to no one. So if we're at, I mean, look at that drop. What? That was in the morning, right? Yeah, 24 hours. Markets open up and then kerbam. So let's take a look at, I don't know, 30 days. So pretty much sideways, right? Except for this big, huge dip right here. Did it go to 200,000? That's when James over at Best Answers picked it up. Sly dog. 90 days, still down. 180 days, about the same. How about one year? Pretty good. How about max? Well, we know how fantastic that is. But if we take, if we just zoom out, we're like, man, look at that. But again, it's all about when you invested. So let's take a look at Ethereum. And I'm not going to bore you with this one, but uh, same thing. Let's take a look at one year. See where Ethereum's at. Pretty darn good. Let's take a look at Max. Fantastic. And what it all comes down to is this. It really just comes down to time in is more important than timing of the market. And we can just definitely take a look at uh, the lessons from uh, Amazon. And Amazon here, uh, again, if you take a look at a six-month time frame, still up pretty well. Year to date, still up. One year five years, and of course the max. Amazon is just one of those, I mean, you can call it a tech stock, uh, but uh, it's just one of those that has persevered over time. And these are just some lessons from history. When you take a look at it and go, am I doing, like when I, to me personally, when I think about investing in crypto and digital assets, people are like, Rob, you're doing the right thing because it seems very volatile and you've lost a lot along the way. I'm like, yeah, well, so did Amazon. Look how that worked out. Now, does that mean that every single project in crypto is going to make it? <laughs> no, no, of course not. It's not going to happen like that. And that's why on this channel, I'm very, I'm trying to be as conservative as I possibly can and try to pick these, um, when I, the things that I invest into. I'm not telling you what to invest into. These, this, this channel is just investment opinion, not investment advice. But uh, I try to pick the most conservative ones that I think have the, the best chance for longevity. So here's a quick little lesson about Amazon. Uh, uh, this was back in the day in the 90s. As the site began growing, Amazon, many investors had their doubts about Amazon instead of favoring brick and mortar book selling giant Barnes and Noble. First of all, I don't know if you even remember what Barnes and Noble is, but uh, back in the day, it was huge. And can you kind of see exactly what's, what's going on here as far as like the same type of thing? Like when people look at cryptocurrency, they're like, I don't know about cryptocurrency, but that digital dollar sounds pretty good or the CBDC or maybe the digital yuan. And we talked about that uh, yesterday. I'm gonna uh, link that over here. You can watch that video or it'll be, it'll be at the end uh, why that is uh, just, whew, I don't know if that's a really great idea, but we just, we, we go through the motions about that one. So again, when we take a look at Amazon, there's some good lessons from the history. At an early meeting between Barnes & Noble chairman Leonard Reggio and Bezos, Reggio reportedly told Bezos he would crush, would crush Amazon. Barnes & Noble dwarfed the young startup. Uh, that, that traditional bookseller had hundreds of stores and more than $2 billion in revenue. It was also tapping into major Silicon Valley talent to build its own sleek new website as far as Barnes & Noble. And that's just kind of leads me to this. Like, if you just want to talk about the oldest cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin, I know some people love it. Some people are like, it's ancient technology. Look, uh, so is gold. And gold's got a $12 trillion market cap. So if you want to talk about a store of value, and of course, in, in the comments, you can talk about whatever your store of value that you want, to, want it to be. But gold really can't compete 
uh, with Bitcoin as far as the fungibility, as far as transferring it uh, across the entire world in seconds, uh, and as far as like the finite supply of 21 million, and uh, and even wins that argument uh, as far as uh, renewable resources because it takes a lot of power to dig up gold. So when we're talking about that, I'm like, why can't why can't Bitcoin have you know half the market cap of gold? And of course, as Bitcoin goes up, so does all the all other altcoins go up. So uh, when we take a look at, at these old these old stories about uh, you know old technology, I mean, look, Amazon's been around for quite some time, still seems to make it, uh, but there's some older ones that just didn't work out, Blockbuster and things like that. And then to finish up this this article, I just wanted to say make mention of this: the mid 2000s bought a period of both skepticism and immense immense growth for Amazon, as the company recovered from the brutal dot com crash. It rarely returned money to investors or made a profit, which is different now for, for Bitcoin and digital assets. Amazon was aggressively reinvesting its revenue. The company continued to expand its customer base and its retail offerings. It also began experimenting with and investing in big ideas that would pay off later, like Amazon Prime, Amazon Web Service, and the Kindle. So again, when you take a look at all these different things that are going on, which one do you think out there as far as finance is really innovating and doing things for its customers do you think it's the banks and do you think it's the central banks or whoever else is out there or do you think that uh, maybe digital assets uh, might be uh, the one to look at so look um i can't tell you what to do i can just take a look at the past and see where things are going and zoom out and i think things could do very well the only thing i can't tell you is uh when uh, i could be it could be in a week could be in uh, years from now. I have no idea, but I mean, that's just like a cop-out answer. I don't think it's gonna be years, but that's just me. So let me know what you think in the comments section and let's finish up with a little wisdom from Warren Buffett who called, who called Bitcoin rap poison squared. So when I'm talking about this, Warren, this is, this is a great video from, an, from Investor Center. And what Warren talks about here is he talks about big opportunities when you find these big opportunities, they must be seized. And he talks about punch cards and about really, you know, kind of diversifying everything that you're actually invest into. And when, when you hear this, it's a minute long. When you hear this, I want you to comment, really comment uh, below if this pertains to you. Because in crypto, it's so easy just to buy these crazy, you know, meme coins and things like that. Have you lost a lot of money? And have you done enough research into all the different products that are out there to just go, you know what, I want to pick these and just stick with these, or are you really just trying to just chase pumps? So just listen to this and tell me what you think. Commission is way bigger than commission. There is big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. And even to do it on a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. I mean, you've really got to, you got to grab them when they come because they, you're not going to get 500 great opportunities. You would be better off if when you got out of school here, you got a punch card with 20 punches on it. And every big financial, every financial decision you made, you used up a punch. You get very rich because you'd think through very hard. Each one. I mean, he went to a cocktail party and somebody talked about a company. He didn't even understand what they did or couldn't pronounce the name, but they made some money last week and another one like it. You wouldn't buy it if you only had 20 punches on that card. There's a temptation to dabble, if uh, particularly during bull markets. In uh, uh, stocks, it's so easy. You know, it's easier now than ever because you can do it online. You know, just you click it in and maybe it goes up a point and get excited about that and you buy another one the next day and so on. You can't make any money over time doing that. But if you had a punch card with only 20 punches, you weren't going to get another one the rest of your life. You would think a long time before every investment decision and you would make. And you would make probably the best decisions you could possibly do if you only had 20 punch cards. So again, is that you? Have you been dabbling a little bit too much in crypto and all these different uh, uh, products that are out there? And um, if you have, don't worry, we've all been on the same road. It's just that on this channel, I just try to to bring attention to the things that I think uh, are gonna do well. And I talk about doing your own research and really putting yourself out there and really really delving into these projects. And to me, it's not just about, you know, what's gonna make you a ton of money tomorrow. It's about what's going to, what your investments are gonna do for you down the road. I'm just an investor. I'm not a day trader, I'm not a swing trader. I don't like try to, try to make a million dollars in a month because I just think that if you do that, if you're able to do that, first of all, one, you probably got lucky. 
And second of all, if you can, and you probably can't duplicate that again. Uh, maybe there's the 0.001% out, out there, but uh, if you just play the odds, uh, long-term investing, like what Warren is talking about here, really usually, usually does pay off pretty well. So anyhow, so that's it for today. I just want to bring some attention to light about what's going on in the crypto market and the, of course, traditional traditional fields. I know it seems kind of scary right now, especially, uh, you know, when have you gotten in? If you got in, you know, at the very all-time high, yeah, it sucks. But guess what? I did the exact same thing in 2017. I am exactly where you are at just four years ago. And guess what I did? Uh, I dollar cost averaged uh, all the way up and I dollar cost average on the way down. And when everything was boring, I just became an investor and I dollar cost average for four straight years until today. And I just had to tell you, uh, I'm up pretty big uh, so far, uh, even as the market has uh, you know, receded to that 50%. And uh, no one said it would be easy to be an investor, but uh, in the long run, I still believe in it. All right, so that's it for today. So look, uh, if you made it all the way to the end, thanks, I appreciate it. If you liked the video, you found a little value and found a little relief, uh, give it a thumbs up and a like. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about here are very time sensitive. We're just through the news. And then over on Dan Clips, uh, we do live streams and more um, uh, deep dives and portfolio reviews and things like that. Also tomorrow night, we're gonna have uh, uh, Dave, from Crazy for Cryptos, and we're gonna have uh, Guy from Coin Bureau on on a live stream. Guy is there's a, a conflict of interest because when we do it, it'll be two, <laughs> be two in the morning for Guy. So we'll see what he might just record some things and then off off we go. But that's over on Dan Clips, and go check it out. Link in the description. All right, thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.